Maybe you have a comment or a question about one of the two of the bills. It'd be really difficult to um, hi, my name is Asya. My name is Maniko Credit. Um, and we're in sixth grade. We got a. Can she hear us? Can she hear us? Can she hear us? I think it's on mute. Hey, you, you, it's, it's can you hear us? Am I off mute now? Yeah, you're off mute. Now. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. My name is Maniko Credit. My name is Austria Warfa, and we're in sixth grade. We go to Jenny International Middle School, and we had a question about the 112 law, law. bill. Um, my question is, why should the adult get in trouble, whether if the student, I mean, the kid has the gun or not? Even though it wasn't the parent's actions or the guardian's actions. So I think the, um, the, background behind the bill is a reflection of what causes a lot of um, incidents of gun deaths here in our in, in our state and nationally and statistics show and I don't have those numbers right offhand but statistics show that the number of suicides that occur for young adults um, as well as violence in the home is often caused from a gun not being properly stored in in the in in the home, mm -hmm. and so that would so the bill aims at putting more pressure on parents to properly store their weapons so they can't get to the 
the hands of children where they could be used in a violent way and perhaps lead to um, death or suicide. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, next to Michael. No. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Comment, question, yourself, nice and loud, my name is Yaya Abdullahi. My name is Michael Lonimo. I'm Mr. Scurry. He's in eighth grade. And we both go to Denny. Excellent. Nice to meet you guys. Uh, is there a correlation between gun ownership and gun violence in the U.S.? Um, that is what that is what the proponents uh, indicate. Yes, um, I think I I wanted I was I have was instructed that you chose these bills as bills that you're interested in and advocating for. So I'm more curious to hear why your class chose these initiatives to follow through the legislative process and. Um, I, I want to advocate on your behalf and to understand what your interest is in these bills rather than what my interest is in them because I, my interest is directed by you and so I'm curious, you, you know, the question you asked of me, do you think that there's a correlation between gun ownership and gun violence? Probably. Probably. <laughs> Well, if the, yeah, it, definitely if there's violence with guns, there would be a correlation in the fact that somebody either owns it or has it in their possession. Yes. Sure. All right. Uh, my question is regarding to the law uh, 1122. And uh, my uh, question is, let's, so most gun owners who store their guns responsibly usually will tell their kid where their gun is in case of an emergency. And I was wondering if they would still be charged if their kid were to get into where they stole their gun. If the gun, my understanding of, of the law, of the legislation that's proposed, um, I'd like to look at it more closely, but my understanding of it is if the gun is not properly stored, then the adult would be charged. So if a child was to gain possession of the of the firearm inside the home that and it was properly stored i don't believe there would be a charge if there is it would maybe be on a lesser charge cuz i my understanding of the legislation is it is tiered um, meaning there are different levels based on um, how how the gun came into possession and how it was used how it was maybe discovered Hi, that's it Thank you. What did I say about the gun? No. Hold on. Nice and loud. Allah, how you doing? Great, thanks. Uh, my name's Najib. Uh, I'm Mohammed. And we're eighth graders at Denny International Middle School, Seattle, Washington. And uh, I'm here to talk to you about, like, I, I, I'm fully supportive of House Bill 1387. And I like, you know, the uh, the background check standards of that. But then 1122 is like the one I don't like because um, the, uh, like, like, I, I understand that, you know, like, for example, like, let me make a scenario. So if, like, uh, if I'm a father and like my uh, uh, like son or daughter like uh, takes a gun for me that I put like under my mattress or something and they take it and I shoot somebody at school, I get in trouble for that and put in jail. But then I don't think like that should be the case because like I think like you know they should 
they should be like old enough to take action for like what they did until like 12 or older maybe but, like if they're like really small like seven or eight then maybe like you know also like the parents should have raised the, like their child better so they they you know they would know not to touch the gun or you know to be responsible like for example like you know my father like back in like somalia like uh his uh he used to carry his dad's ak-47 around and he knew how to use it he was responsible because you know his dad taught him like the gun responsibilities but then these days like they're like people are getting into accidents like because their parents don't teach them about gun responsibility and like yeah um well i think you raise points that will probably be presented when the bill is heard in the legislative committee um obviously there are there the the proponents of this bill those who are speaking in favor of it are going to claim that that, that a responsible parent would properly store their firearm or or gun in in the home and properly store means you know, in a in a safe, um, locked uh, unit of some kind, and that's what responsible parents do, while also raising their children to understand gun safety and uh, gun responsibility. The, uh, the the folks who will be opposing the bill, the opponents, uh, will probably state that very thing that you know we. That, you have a right to own and possess a gun, and the government shouldn't have the um, right to impose restrictions on how you uh, possess how you possess how you possess that firearm. So, uh, I think that definitely you'll hear both sides of those arguments when 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 the bill is heard. Um, this is not going to be legislation. Um, that is going to easily become law. There are very strong feelings on both sides of the argument, and you just presented one of the, one of the strong points of the opposing side. Okay. You got anything? Thank you. Thank you. Let's go with me. Nice and loud. Your name. What grade you're on. And, and uh, good. No, can you see me? Yeah, hello. Uh, hi, my name is uh, Wheeling. I'm an eighth grader. My name is Shay, and I'm an eighth grader. Um, we would like to ask, uh, why is assault weapons cheaper than handguns? <laughs> I am not a gun expert, so I cannot answer that question. Um, there are folks who are who are pushing this legislation, the, the Gun Responsibility Alliance, that's actually, I don't think that's their official name, but I, my understanding is they came and spoke to you. Um, they are leading the charge on this effort and probably could um, explain that a little bit better than I, but I am not a gun owner um, and I'm not familiar with how gun pricing occurs. Um, I would like to ask, um, if this state is Washington is so like like up on gun laws to like control them, why don't they just pass any good gun laws? Why don't we pass any good gun laws? Yeah. Um, well, I think some would state that we have made that there has been progress in this state that we do have some good gun laws on the books. I mean, there there are background checks that occur, but the proponents that are running these two bills. Um, want to see them enhanced. They want strong. They want stronger gun laws, and it's in response to recent events. Um, there were some. There have been two recent shootings that could have been prevented had the guns not been had not been um, received, uh, have they had not been obtained within the home. In another case where an individual went in, a, a young adult went in and purchased a gun and was able to purchase it immediately over the counter. I think guns are, um, what you'll hear is guns are a very serious device and there should be assurances that if you're buying one, that you have a complete understanding of the responsibilities that you are assuming by owning or possessing a firearm. And that's what the proponents of this legislation are really trying to impress and move through legislation in, in, in our state. So 
things are enhanced? Uh, for the Bill Rights uh, 1122, uh, what if parents aren't home that often and the young adult uh, gets to the firearm, but then uh, the parents has to, has to be, has to be uh, punished for what he has done? But what if they have multiple kids so he can't watch the rest of his kids? Well, again, I think it has to do with what the proponents would say, which is if you're a responsible parent and you know whether you have one child, six or ten, you're responsible for all of those children. And the best way to protect your children from accessing your firearm would be to put it in a locked environment of some kind, in, in a safe storage place so kids cannot get their hands on, on the gun. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. Of course. Come on here. Nice. Uh, What's your name? You. Your grade? <laughs> Hello, my name is uh, Carter. Hi, I'm Vivian. And I'm an eighth grader. And I'm a sixth grader. Um, I was wondering. Nice and loud. Nice and loud. Okay, I was wondering. Um, like, why did you choose this, like, for your job? And, like, what are the bad things and the good things about it? Um, well, that's a, that's a question I, that I could probably speak for 10 minutes on, but so we can explore it more, I think, as we have more Skype sessions. But um, I am interested in politics and the legislative process. And I worked initially at the local level moving laws through the local legislative process, so through the county government, um, and an opportunity presented itself for me to work down here in Olympia on state legislation, and I thought that was a logical step for my career. Um, I, I get excited about the issues that people are debating at the time. Um, I, I have typically personally strong opinions one way or the other and it's great to represent a client where my values are aligned with the um direction that they're that they that they want to go with with a bill or a law and um it's it's, it's a just fun dynamic place to work. there's always something new to talk about and i enjoy hearing the opposing side of arguments because it tends to um, no, like just my opinion. You know, often I walk into a process and think that I understand it, and think that I know what my feelings are about it, but upon discovery about a confusing argument, I learn that some of my preconceived notions were wrong, or I had, or I had didn't have a, the right sense of 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 the issue at hand, and so. My, my, my mind might change and I like my ability to live in an environment where I can listen to all different sides of the story and perhaps change my, my frame of mind. And uh, I have a question yeah. about House Bill 1122. Uh, what if the kid shot the owner of the gun? I, I, the, the child may or may not be charged depending on the circumstances of the of the case. Um, it's, I it could go in a lot of different directions, but obviously if the person who owned the gun is deceased, they can't be charged for not properly storing the gun. But if there was another adult in the home, they may that maybe they are um, liable for for the you know the, the, the tragedy that occurred. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. Who's the next? Okay, Carter. I need to do it. I don't know how to get that. You're supposed to come in. Okay, there we go. Uh, my name is He. I'm from Denny International Middle School. And my name is Shaden. I'm from Denny International Middle School. Uh, a question we would like to ask is, why are assault weapons so easy to get? Um, those are those are great questions, and that is why we have the legislation at hand. Um, I think that there are folks, there are people who um, believe that those that that assault weapons with high capacity. Um, 
magazines in them um, lead to more deaths. If someone chooses to be violent in a public environment, when you have those assault weapons that are readily available, um, more tragedies occur. Um, I cannot answer the question why they are more readily available. I'm not familiar enough with, with gun sales um, and the laws around around that. Okay. Another question that we like to ask you is, why are there more guns in shops than Starbucks and McDonald's combined? Excellent questions. Um, I don't mean to be flip, but there are people who just love their guns and they like to exercise their constitutional right to own and possess a firearm. And that is their right. They can own one, they can own 12, they can own 200. Um, and that is why the um, for gun responsibility has an issue with that because they 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 would claim what's the what's the what's the need for this amount of guns um, in someone's home or in someone's possession or just in society in general? And they believe you can reduce violence if you have fewer guns um, available. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Um, my name is Joaquin. I testified last year for a house bill. 1682 is the house bill I testified for last year. It was about like homelessness and trying to like help like kids who needed the help who don't have like a lot of money so they don't have to worry about like food and stuff. Uh -huh. And that a bill did pass, so I'm really happy. And, but I have one question for gun violence, and that is Louder. why why are bullets for assault rifles so cheap? Um, you guys are asking some great questions, and I do not know the answers to that. The um, you know the, the bill that we are looking at seeks to delay the purchase of assault weapons so a further background check can be occurred. Um, from my understanding, the bill does not tackle the pricing issue of these of these devices. Um, and again, I, I I don't own a gun, so I don't I don't know the ins and outs of gun sales and wh and why that would be the case. That's it. That's all I have. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Who's up next? Hey, why don't you join us? We got them on live. Great question last week. About the issues about that. About the issues about that. About the issues about that. About the issues so three wars with great breweries. Uh, and I don't know if you're right about one one two two, but you're a little bit you're not uh, you had a question about it. Okay. Yeah, what do you believe? You say who you are? One question. This is Jubilee. She Hi. Just she just walked into class, so uh she hasn't but you uh, you had some great comments and concerns about House Bill 1122 last week. Do you remember it? You want to talk? This is Bryn. Got to get in front of the camera right here. Okay, good. I forgot what you're saying. Hey, what is it? Like, you know, the storage one? How, like, storage, the parents would be responsible. And then the parents would be. What you doing about that? I think you had an issue, right? You're, you had some concern about that. So why should the parents be? Yeah, so yeah, I said, okay, good, good. Um, why, why should the parents be in trouble if the kid had, if the kid was the one that grabbed the gun? The proponents would, I think, would answer that by saying that parents are responsible for their children and, and, and keeping their children and raising their children in a safe environment. 
and if firearms are not properly stored, it creates a hazardous environment for the, ch for the children. So the bill would punish parents for allowing a hazardous environment within their home, which could be so. Um, potential violence or potential death because of a child's lack of understanding about gun about gun responsibility, how to use a gun, and it's, it's an attempt to try and prevent uh, prevent deaths and violence within the home. Oh, that's smart. I just see Thank you. You're welcome. Oh my gosh, so scared. Okay. So come on. Be in front of the camera. The camera on the right corner. Are you right there? My name is My name is Alessandria Hardwell. I'm in seventh grade, and I don't get how eleven thousand one hundred twenty-seven people are killed every year by guns, and Americans only make up five percent of the United population and have forty percent, forty-two percent of the gun violence. How do you feel about that? Um, well, I, I don't feel great about deaths that can be prevented. So in cases where um, young children obtain a firearm and an accident occurs that, that, that um, causes a death, I think that those are, those are horrible stories. Um, and in our country, there are various approaches to trying to reduce those tragedies from occurring. Um, here in Washington State, they're taking an approach that um, focuses on the parent and puts pressure on the parent to be very responsible when they possess firearms in the home and put them in a very, in a locked safe environment. But what if there's, I don't agree with that want the house bill one one two two because what if it's like a kid over uh, at least over 11 or over 10 i think that the bill should be kids five to ten shouldn't have their parents deal with it but kids older than that should be able to face their consequences because that's teaching them how the real world would be like i some people might agree with you on that i think that a lot of times, or you will hear from the opponents of this bill that, you know, it's very, very challenging for a parent to be in control of every moment of a child's life. Um, and there will be instances where even if a firearm is locked safely, um, the gun could still be retrieved in the home or worse, um, in some cases, the, a young a young adult or young child, a ten year old, using using your time frame here or your your the years that you're working with, thinking about you know buying it on the streets and just generally speaking, I think any young person still, even if they've been gone through a class at the age of ten or eleven, I think the enormity of gun responsibility it's time to understand and you as a as a young person need to develop emotionally and physically to not act, not behave irrational and that is one of the other instances that where when you talk about suicides among youth many times suicide the number one cause of suicide is with with a gun and those statistics aren't the same when you talk about adults. And I think it has to do with the lack of growth that some that young kids have, that they take an immediate action and a gun is, is quite immediate and results in in death a lot of times. So the people who really care about protecting kids want to assure 
them that guns are not going to be readily available and try to reduce the number of suicide deaths among among you. I also feel that um, that it's mostly happening because there's more gun shops in the United States. There's more than gun shops, more than the Starbucks and McDonald's all combined. So I think that if we eliminate those gun shops, then there will be less gun violence. But then we'll also have to worry about the trades that nobody ever hears about, which would be the underground trades and stuff like that. This is great thoughts. You put a lot of thought into it. Good job. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Good job. What do you do? Hi, Bryn. This is I'm Mr. Siegel Will. Hi. Hi. Um, and, oh, let me put this. There you go. There. I'm a little taller than most of the kids. Um, then, uh, so we're coming down next Thursday. Um, and we're working for the next four days on having powerful narrative stories, little anecdotes and things, so we're working on that. Uh, I, I don't know um, if you want to eventually send us something about for our next Skype or something about what kind of questions or comments or how we want to proceed with that. That would be helpful. Um, okay. Let me ask you this first. So when Lori initially told me about this legislation, I had the impression that the kids were in support support of both pieces of legislation and the comments that I heard today sound like the kids have a lot of concerns about 1122. So what I would need to do is inform the proponent, the, the bill sponsor, Representative Kagi, that actually these kids are coming down not to support her legislation, they're coming down with some concerns about it. And so I need to under have a really firm understanding of what what type of um, argument they're, they are presenting. Is it pro or is it con? Well, let me, um, so what I wanted them to do today, because when we had the conversation last week, these comments and concerns were, were, were talking about and we watched lots of videos and we're just trying to get them to understand the bill. So I kept on telling them if you have comments or concerns or questions, uh, we should ask you on Thursday. And so I kept on encouraging them. So when they're writing their stories, the students who really support 1387, I would say, just have your story connect with them. With the kids who really support 1122, they would have that. So their stories were, are not going to question or have come. Um, uh, but today was just trying to kind of fill in some of the gaps. So when they do stand up there, they're very, so yeah, I understand where you're coming from, but I, I wanted today just to, um, to, to get a little more background or understanding about both of these bills and to practice speaking and things like that. I think um, so um, that's, 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 that's why the questions were, um, uh, were questioning, I guess. Okay. Yeah, it, it, which is fine, and, and I'm happy to do it. Just my role as a lobbyist is, you guys behaving as my client is, you tell me what your position is, and then I move forward with it. I don't necessarily get into a dialogue with the client about the merits of the legislation one way or the other. That's what you do, and you tell me what to go out and talk about. So, um, which is, which is the learning process, and that's just that's what we can talk to about later on is the role of a lobbyist with in this process and what they how they um, interact with the, with the legislature. So, for, so for your direction with the children is um, is let them understand that they will speak to one bill um, at a time. So they they open up the hearing to just eleven twenty two. So referencing the other bill. Um, I, I discourage that. Um, these are also going to be very controversial. There will be probably, um, it'll be very active here in Olympia on that particular day. And so I would be, I would encourage the kids to prepare testimony that is definitely no longer than two minutes, but perhaps limited to just one minute, um, which is sometimes, if that's, a, that's hard to do. Um, and I think what you just stated, the anecdotes are always very persuasive. Yeah, so, I think, I think um, what we're trying to do is uh, just really quickly who they are, 
a, a short narrative, the, the story, the power of what it's like in their neighborhood, things like that. To keep it, we're shooting for 30 seconds, 45 seconds. Obviously, um, today was just getting all the kids to practice public speaking and things like that. But there may be only five, six, uh, no more than 10 kids who little have short little anecdotes about, um, you know. And, and I think when young students have examples and stories. That's what people remember. That's the power. So yeah. that's, that's what we're really focusing on. And like you said, uh, it's one bill or the other. Um, but yeah, uh, there'll be, you know, the, the kids are based on what they've seen, many of their stories. They, um, I think, um, yeah, that's, that's uh, their, their stories have a lot to shed more light on than say, um, you guys got to go to class, right? Uh, they have... Hi. This, this is Brandon and Olympia. These are two other students. Hi. Who are you? Hi. I'm Jing Lonnie. Who are you? Um, I'm Alvin. Hello. Hi. You can look me up if you want to. <laughs> okay. Good, yeah, but that, that's great. That's good direction. I appreciate that. Um, and you said five to ten kids. They probably let's not they won't they won't want there won't be enough time for that many kids. I would say probably focus on just three per bill. Three per bill, got it. Three per bill. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, we're, we're trying to, um, this is a lot of incentive because the students who have E's and D's are not allowed on the field trip, so that's gonna narrow down some of the kids as well. So it's a great incentive to go on our first field trip and make sure they're dressed, uh, you know, we're, we're, you know, dressed appropriately, getting permission slips, uh, so there's a lot of a lot of legwork to do in the next couple of days. So. Okay, well, I'll be in touch with you because um, the chair of this committee um, I'm close with, and so I'll chat with her to get some better understanding about how she would like to involve the kids um, in that hearing and um, if, it, if it's anything different than what I've already shared. But generally speaking, it's on these types of controversial bills. Um, they need to move people through fast. And that's always eye-opening for kids too. Is yep. unfortunately you don't get to see as much dialogue as what you would hope to uh, see in the legislative process. Okay, so we'll have uh, just a handful, we'll keep them short, powerful anecdotes, and uh, we'll work on two to three per bill. So that's our goal. Excellent. Okay. Great. Thank nice you, and we'll talk to you soon. Very good. Thanks. Bye. -bye. Yep.